Hey guys, welcome. I'm Parshvika. Welcome to the channel where we make travel videos. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how I make money as a digital nomad living in Bali from more than four months. So, I'm gonna talk about the real ways and the contacts because digital nomad lifestyle seems so fancy and it has its pros and cons. So, I'm gonna really talk about how I make money and how you can too if you're looking to have a digital nomad lifestyle living in bali or southeast asia or anywhere in the world let's dive in give this video a big thumbs up consider subscribing for more such videos anyway let's talk about there are so many ways in which you can approach it either you can have a remote job or you can work for a company as a freelancer or you can start your own business now for me I did try it with the remote jobs, it didn't work out. I did try with the freelancing as well, it didn't work out as well. I did get a few clients here and there, but it was like, it wasn't for me. Uh, I didn't make profile on the Fiverr, made the gig, it didn't work. Then the third option left is starting the business. So I have my own business which I started back in the 2020 and I took it really seriously in the 2021 or uh later 2021 and then i started traveling in 2023 so i started the business in 2021 and i started traveling in 2023 so you can take it as like two or two and a half years that i have my business up and running before i actually started traveling so i give some time to my business for it to grow because unless you are going for ads or something like that investing so much money in the upfront making money out of the business will gonna take some time again it depends from business model to business model if you are going out and selling your coaching services you may land clients within a couple of the months and you're going to reach your income goal but if you're really starting with a physical product based business or a digital product based business selling on your website or any marketplace then it's gonna take some time and i think that with the coaching as well it takes time you may end up with a few clients couple of the clients in the beginning we really want to build a solid foundation or a brand out of there it definitely gonna take some time so it took me like two and a half years to before start traveling i started i came into bali in the june of 2023 so it took me like two or two and a half years i started in 2021 and I have like online business. I do the coaching as well, but uh, that's not my active income stream. Uh, I mean, that's not I'm actively pursuing and do that just very, very small percentage of my income coming from the coaching. Most of the income is coming from uh, physical products. I sell the physical products. So the income is coming from that. Another income stream I have is having a YouTube channel, not this one, I have other channel as well. So I get the income from that, uh, selling the digital products and selling the art illustrations because I'm an artist. So I create them, I sell them as well. So I have a multiple different income stream, plus I also sell the books, the more stuff I built in these past two years, which is actually helping me to make income and which is helping me to support my digital nomad lifestyle and i'm not going too fancy right now of course i can go too fancy in the beginning when i came to in june in bali i was going fancy in the beginning because it's a new place for me i never been to bali before that so everything was new for me and i was looking at the on the youtube uh, digital nomad lifestyle in bali people living the fancy lifestyle in the pool side on the beach side and the countryside and having an amazing life and i was like i want to go fancy and i did try that but later on switching back to simple and then sometimes fancy sometimes simple so it depends okay it depends on your budget how much you are ready to spend i think three or four different kinds of the accommodation you can get the first is the hostel the second you could get the homestays or the guest houses the third one you could get the hotels now obviously there could be the fourth one if you're living in the resort or something like a villas which you can actually rent uh, if you are in a group traveling to bali or for you if you want to be having an entire villa for you but that depends i don't want to have an entire villa for me even even if i can afford it uh, i don't want it because it's just too isolated for me to stay in a villa all by myself but again it depends so there are the couple of the options uh, i think it ranged from six or seven dollars per day to maybe a hundred dollar now six and seven dollars you can get the hostels now of course if you go going to the kuda i've seen some people living at the three dollar 
uh, a night for a hostel. I'm not sure where, what those hostels look like, but you can start with six or seven dollars. And if you're going with the homestays, it's kind of like a ten dollar, somewhere it's twenty dollars, thirty dollars, depending on whichever part you are in Kura, Chengu, Ubud. Kura is cheaper, I guess, but I'm not sure. I never stayed longer there. I just went for a day or two trip. I'm gonna be going, uh, I think, in November. I'll let you know about it. But I stayed more in the Ubud, so I know more about the Ubud. And I think that in the Ubud, if you're staying in the city center, it's expensive in comparison if you're going outer side. But again, it depends which, uh, whichever place you would like to live in. Uh, Uluwatu, Ahmed, uh, it's a little bit expensive than I guess from Ubud, but again, I'm not sure. I just went on a day trip, so I never stayed there. Changu is not my wife, so I never stayed there. I just went for a trip. So this is the accommodation. now. Obviously, the next thing you're going to need is a visa. I mean, that would be the first thing. But I'm covering as a second thing. I am on a B211A visa. It's a six-month uh, tourist visa. Um, the first time you get for 60 days, and you can extend twice. And one extension is 60 days. So in total, you get 180 days in Bali. Uh, you can have a VOA or visa on arrival. That's 30 days. And then you can extend for next 30 days. So in total, you're going to have 60 days in Bali. Again, it depends. Another thing is the food. That's the most important thing. Now, you can get typically any kind of food here from the Indonesian food to Western food or whatever kind of vegan restaurants and vegetarian restaurants, non-vegetarian, whatever it is. And depending on whichever restaurant you're going, whether it's fancy or small, simple, basic, the warung that's called as a small restaurants in Bali, it going to vary. I think the meal will vary from uh, 2 or $3 to $20 per meal, I guess, or maybe even higher. I think I've been to the cheapest restaurant I can see, which is cheapest. And if I look for a full meal, I pay for 40k IDR. That is the cheapest I found if I'm getting a full meal, full meal, 40k. Uh, it depends. If you're going to the Warung, it can be even more cheaper. Or if you're going to the fancy restaurant, it's expensive, 100k or 200k. I, I'm talking about the idea. So if you I convert into the USDs, it's going to be around like uh, 2 to $3 per meal. If you're going to Warung to maybe $20, $40, $50, if you're going to very, very fancy restaurant or whatever you're purchasing, again, it depends. That's kind of like a food. Then you need to get a SIM. For SIM, I think I paid around um, $30. Yeah, $30 for 30 days SIM. I think it was like 30 GB data. Or you can get a cheaper one if you don't want that much of data. So it depends. Again, the Wi-Fi is free, so you may or may not be needing the SIM. Or you can get the same for small data, not 30 GB is too much for 30 days. You can have 10, 15 or whatever. Another thing you're going to need is a, common, uh, is a transportation system. You can use a Gojek or a Grab. Or you can rent a Scooty or go for the taxi. The Scooty is like, you can see, it depends. Uh, in Denver, or it's cheaper. In comparison to the Ubud, the people have rented 50K per day there. Uh, and here is like you're getting 70 or 80 that means around if I take it as a USD it's gonna be uh, four or five dollars a day I guess for a scooty and then you have to get a petrol I think petrol or the gas is really cheaper here so it doesn't cost that much or you can get a gojek or grab you can have the activities and the waterfalls and there is like entry fees everywhere you're going so I've been to the different places the four waterfalls the rice fields and all that so in the waterfalls i paid around like three or four dollars for entry fees okay so these are the basic things that you're gonna need again and the things will going to vary depending on your budget what activities you're doing and what all the things but this is the way i make money and these are the things that you could expect in bali and i also covered the how much it's gonna cost here plus how i make money and plus how you can make money if you want to have a digital nomad lifestyle i would recommend you to start with freelancing or maybe get some remote job and then move towards your business if you want to have your own business because in the business it definitely gonna take some time if you're starting a business today it may or may not bring you the money in the next six months the first year in the business is not you could expect anything from it unless you're investing something really huge into it or you're doing coaching calls and that's a different thing but don't expect too much in the first year in the business so have a freelancing or remote job while your business is up and well and running video useful let me know what do you think in the comment section below do you want to know more about digital nomad lifestyle what to expect let me know in the comment section below 
that's it for this video let me know what you think i'll see you the next time till then take care bye guys